She's so dramatic, post a caption, I say no regrets. But that's Hello just everybody, welcome up. back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Kristen. In today's video, I want to talk about how I've changed my life for the better. And I want to hopefully inspire you to change your life for the better if you're feeling that your life isn't what you want it to be right now. So a few months ago, I found myself in a really interesting place where I wasn't happy and I was really tired and I felt burned out. And I had an epiphany one day that I was not working smarter, I was working harder. And that that wasn't working for me, for my relationships, for my body, for my business. It just was not conducive for my personal growth or the expansion of my business. And so the first thing that I had to do to start to change my life, well, I guess I don't have to use the word had to, but the first thing that I did that started to change my life and turn, um, turn things around to go into a positive direction was to accept that what I was doing wasn't working. And this was really hard because the old Kristen would have really beat herself up for that and there were times that I did. And, but when I really surrendered to what I'm doing isn't working and really accepted it on a very deep soul level, it was completely liberating and it was the catalyst for bringing in the freedom that I was truly yearning for, but that I didn't know um, I didn't know was available. When I was on the hamster wheel of client after client and personal life, taking care of my friends and family and putting myself last in a lot of ways, I didn't even realize it. It was happening on a totally subconscious level. And so when I accepted that my life wasn't working as is, it allowed me to tap into subconscious programs that were running some things in my life that weren't beneficial for me. And so if you're in a place right now where you're not happy with the direction of your life or you're not happy with how your life is feeling, it is okay to accept that and surrender into it. Because the amazing part of doing that is the liberation and freedom that came from that, the weight that came off my shoulders, allowed me to start making better decisions and different decisions. And those decisions I probably would have been afraid to make or didn't even know they were options before I had surrendered to working harder isn't um, isn't a positive for me that is counterproductive to how I want to live so when I started to make different decisions um, things started to open up and when I started to operate from a place of conscious decision making on every level it was like an instant transformation. And the next thing that I started to do was practice mindfulness. And that's what I'm talking about, conscious decision making. There are so many decisions and choice points that we have all day long that can change the tra trajectory of our life, that can open up timelines and new opportunities. But when we're on a hamster wheel or if we're buried under a pile of work or if we are giving to others before we've given to ourself, it is really hard to even see that those choices exist or are even possible to make. So I can just give you an example that when I woke up in the morning, instead of going straight to my emails, voicemails, and getting on my computer or checking social media, I immediately went for a walk. I immediately meditated. I went straight to the beach. So I started to change my schedule from the moment I woke up. And I started to practice 
mindfulness in actually really thinking about decisions and making them. So when I was on the hamster wheel and feeling burned out, I was making decisions um, because I felt I had to or I was so overwhelmed I didn't make a decision at all. And the interesting thing is making a decision either way um, is positive because you've moved some energy and you can also always change your mind down the road. But not making a decision or procrastinating or feeling buried or stuck under your circumstances actually keeps you stuck. Um, so I, I really started to wanted, I really wanted to study and understand the science behind mindfulness. And so um, I'm a researcher. I was a television producer um, before I became a healer and a life coach. And I always enjoyed researching and um, a lot of friends of mine, when they have a subject or a topic that they want to know more about, they um, they always uh, ask me if uh, I can volunteer my research skills because I am an incredible internet researcher. And so I started to find um, people who were in the forefront of cognitive behavioral um, and psychological uh, neurological studies, um, actually scientific experiments that were proving how to be mindful and how mindfulness can change your life. And I ran across um, this TED talk with a woman who I had never heard of, but come to find out she is this very famous and highly popular podcast host. And I'm going to link her video below so you can check out her TED talk about mindfulness. But she discovered the five second rule. And when I watched this TED talk, it completely piggybacked off of other TED talks that I had watched about the science behind mindfulness. So this woman, Mel Robbins, she coined this term, and at the time she had no idea that this was actually scientific, and that this actually changed the neural pathways and the neural peptides, the neuroplasticity of the brain, to actually start making better decisions and actually start to heal depression and anxiety. So it's called the five second rule. And I started to apply this from the moment I woke up because it stops you from hitting the snooze button and helps you to immediately get out of bed. So the five second rule is to, if you find yourself overwhelmed, if you find yourself depressed, which is living in the past, if you find yourself in anxiety, which is living in the future, um, if you have an idea pop into your head, but you can't actually do anything about that idea right now, but you wanna like catalog it, you wanna bookmark it in your mind, the five second rule is to say to yourself, five, four, three, two, one, inside your head. And what it does is it resets your brain and allows your brain to make a jump across a bridge to a new vibration. And so like when you're getting out of bed and you wanna hit snooze and you say five, four, three, two, one, it will help your body go into action. And I'm telling you, this works. All right, so the next thing is, if you have an inspired idea, um, when I walk and um, I love to walk at the beach, I love to walk around my neighborhood, I walk everywhere, <laughs> um, I would have an idea or have something come into my mind. Five, four, three, two, one allows your brain to make the next step. It allows your brain to jump that bridge, to cross that neuro highway and actually catalog the next step. If you find yourself living in the past and thinking about things, regrets, if you're beating yourself up, if you are um, sad about things that have maybe transpired in your life, 54321 helps you get back into the present moment. So the whole concept of mindfulness and living in 5D and really the evolution of spirituality and where we are now is living in the moment. Because 5D is the miracle zone. And when we live in the moment, instantaneous opportunities and manifestations will find us. So if you find yourself in anxiety, which is all about projecting fears into the future, 
future hasn't happened yet. We have no idea what's going to happen. You get to create your future. And when you're in overwhelm, it's really, really hard to believe that. And I know because I was there. Five, four, three, two, one brings you back into the present moment so that your brain can work in a positive momentum forward to create the life that you desire and not accidentally or unconsciously manifest your fears. So I guess we're three or four months into this next phase or this metamorphosis um, that I'm in right now because it still isn't done. It's still in the process of happening and we all um, on the awakening journey, on the personal growth journey are in a constant state of metamorphosis. Um, but in just this short period of time, my whole life has changed. So I have just launched the Awakened Vibes website. I am going to be forwarding Magical Kristen to Awakened Vibes, but it's a process. The Awakened Vibes website will have a lot more content. I'm still working on the content, but the website is alive. And it is a content-based website. It's going to have my YouTube feed, my Instagram feed, and then blog post. The Magical Kristen website was more of a service-based website, and that just didn't resonate for me anymore. And the concept and me as Magical Kristen was really about when I carried my Reiki table around. And that was the original conception of that business. So through accepting that my life wasn't working, allowing myself to live in the moment and start to make different decisions, and practicing conscious mindfulness helped me to upgrade, up-level my business and myself on a personal level. And I feel like Awakened Vibes, um, this YouTube channel and my website, I feel like it is a lifestyle. It is a way of being and it invites all of us in. Where Magical Kristen was just a girl, a woman who had a Reiki table in the back of her, um, the back of her SUV and lugged it all around town and I'm not that person anymore. So for a limited time only, I am going to be offering private sessions, but I am phasing out one-on-one -on -one sessions in favor of coaching. Over the last few months, I have had the most amazing experiences with women that I have been coaching um, in the Awakened Vibes program, and it has given me so much joy to work with someone longer term to help them to shift their life, to help them to start their business, and to help to facilitate spiritual awakening and personal growth. And I feel... Um, at this time in my life, um, I'm going to expand Awakened Vibes in my business in a way that is so exciting and I don't even know exactly what it looks like yet, but I can feel it. And in 5D, that's all you need. If you can feel it, then it can make its way into your causal body, which is how we manifest in 5D. The causal body is the vibration tone that we set that is our manifesting tool, how we can manifest without doing, but rather being. So if you are interested in coaching with me, all the information to talk to me about that is below. And like I said, for limited time only, it's Mercury retrograde and the energies are really intense right now. We just had a really intense full moon. We're in the corridor of the Lion's Gate. So I do want to offer one-on-one -on -one sessions um, uh, as I phase them out. So if you are interested in having a spiritual response therapy session with me, where we are going to work on releasing and clearing these subconscious programs that are still playing out in patterns of your life that um, are not serving you, all the information to book that appointment uh, is below as well. 
So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it assisted you in starting to feel into how you can positively change your life. And thank you so much to everyone who sent me emails, everyone who reached out to me. Uh, there were so many people that were worried about me and I just wanna let you know that I am okay, but that I had to cocoon in while I made these changes. Um, the interesting thing is I woke up in 2012 and the summer of 2012 was perhaps the most profound time of my life and here we are in 2018 and we are in a very similar astrological pattern and we are in a very similar time energetically so if you had a transformation in 2012 and you're having another transformation here in 2018 you're right on track you're not doing anything wrong and just because your life isn't working for you doesn't mean you haven't done that you've done something wrong it simply means you have expanded beyond what you knew your life to be you are outgrowing um, the identities that were your life and were you and you're ready for bigger and better so I hope this video has um, resonated with you and I would love to hear um, how you start to practice the 54321 and I would love to hear um, how the experiment with the five second rule works for you. And it's not the five second rule about dropping food and not being able to eat it. It's the five second rule about being mindful and about taking inspired action. So I'm sending you lots of love and wishing you a magical, magical summer. Namaste, everybody. I see